Hey guys, I know it's a little bit early, but I'm going to start the stream now so I can get the underpainting done and um, sort of just get the boring or as much of the boring part done as quick as I can so that by the time the actual um, live stream time begins, which is in about 35 minutes, I should hopefully get have a little bit more of an interesting step to take up next. So if you guys want to know a little bit more information about the materials that I'm using, just check the description. Um, also, I hope I'm speaking loud enough. I don't want to speak too much louder because there's people sleeping in the house. So, okay, I'm just going to jump straight into it. I've got a couple of pencils that I've set aside here next to me. And um, I think what I'm going to do, this drawing is quite small, so it's about postcard size. And I'm just going to start doing the rock part behind the lunar moth. Now I did just transfer the image on to make it quicker and simpler and I'm doing it really small so that I can try and get this entire drawing done in one live stream. So this drawing is the Color Pencil Magazine's July challenge of the lunar moth. So um, if you want to check out the Color Pencil Magazine challenge just check the link in the description and follow it and I encourage you guys to enter your drawings as well. Okay, hi DJ, welcome. Okie dokie. So I'm just gonna jump straight in. So I will talk probably a little bit more or go more in depth about everything um, in 25, uh, in 35 minutes when the stream is actually supposed to start. So for now, I'm sort of just gonna keep my head down and get, get on with the underpainting as much as I can. Okay. So I think I'm gonna start off with oh and the color that I'm using here I'm actually not sure what color this is but this is the Metons Tex sanded paper so if you use the Metons Tex or the Metons Touch sanded paper either one is fine one yeah, I think it's the touch the Metons Touch paper is about five grams heavier than the Tex that's the only difference but the grit excuse me the grit is the same hey Maureen hey Barbara welcome guys so I'm going to jump in with some cold gray number one, so uh, cold gray one, number 230, and um, sort of just create some textures on the rocks. So like I said, uh, the beginning of a drawing like this is pretty boring for a while and it doesn't look any good for a couple of uh, layers. Uh, so I just sort of wanted to get that as much of that done before the actual stream is supposed to start. But I also know that I didn't want to really skip out on this piece and just do it before the time because there's a lot of you guys that are really interested in knowing how to start properly. So this is still an important step for you. I love this little snail on the mushroom. So download the reference um, from the link in the description so you can have a better look at what I'm looking at. Because the reference that you can see on the, the screen would be too tiny for you to really admire the snail. <laughs> hey Wicked, hey Jacqueline, Kathleen, hello. <laughs> so. My face is super bright, it's just I can't really change the lighting very much. I've got this big um, sort of, if you have a look, this like bar of light over the top. And it just makes my face super, super bright. <laughs> hey Ivy, welcome guys. Rocks are actually um, pretty, pretty easy to draw because you don't have to get the details of the texture right properly because no one's going to know the difference. So you just want to create the different values and highlights. Um, the shadows and highlights in it will make it much easier to just see the depth of a rock. Okay. 
The great thing about drawing on paper like this is it's so easy to see your light colors. So it's quite easy to also start with light colors instead of the darker colors. So it was like this mustardy sort of color. So light yellow ochre, number 183. Hey Tracy. <laughs> Avery, welcome. You guys are dealing with the heat and we are dealing with the cold. <laughs> it is pretty cold. Uh, I stopped myself from putting the air conditioning on um, because it makes too much noise. <laughs> so I'm sitting on my left hand right now. <laughs> creating just like little scribbly emotions and I'm going to continue to do this with multiple colors over the rock for a while See, I'm pretty tempted to fill the rock in with the gray I'm going to do that. I'm going to fill the rock in with a grey while still using um, the Van Dyke Brown number 176 just to help me see the, the darker textures. But that's going to show up much better if I just fill, fill in the space. This is a little scary for you because you're like, oh my gosh, I can't see anything. My lines are vanishing. Um, then just work section by section. DJ saying there's a lot going on in this pick and I yes there is and that's what I think makes it so fun
because also when you're working this small you can put a lot of detail in one little section and by the time you get bored of that section you'll be done with that section and then you can move on to the next section so I think it's one of those drawings that you could actually sit through and do the whole thing quite easily because um, there's a lot of variation in what you're drawing at the time Oh, and this is going to be my last Color Pencil Magazine monthly challenge for a couple of months, just to give you guys a heads up. <laughs> so things are um, getting a bit busy and yeah, I just won't be able to get to it for a while. And then I'm also, that being said, I'm also doing two more Pan Pastel demos and then that'll be it for that as well, um, just because... Um, we've got a lot happening in the next couple of months and also my mom's coming to visit in September which is so nice I can't wait um, it's been three years already since I last seen her so um, I'm super super excited about that so all my attention is gonna be on her when she comes and sees me so um, I don't know what I'll be doing with the drawing Thanks, Maureen. Okay. Now I'm going to continue on with the light yellow ochre, number 183. <clears throat> this is going to be so much fun when we add the solvent. Because it's just going to blend in super smooth. And we can even use the solvent and the brush to help manipulate the textures of the rocks. I'll show you how we do that. I'm going to use some of the Van Dyke Brown because there's an area here. It's a little bit darker. It's a crack in the rock. Use it over here as well. Hey, Camilla. <laughs> okay, back to the light ochre, light yellow ochre.
So putting the grey down first has helped because it's helping to blend these yellow tones into it. Because the rock isn't all that dark actually, it's very light. like to use some of the olive green yellowish number 173 uh, Clarice is asking what do I think is my favorite out of the color pencil magazine challenges so far don't know. I really don't know. I'm thinking that I'm actually going to love this one a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really like the water lily. That one was good. But... Each one had its challenges. <laughs> so, the um, telephone that we did, that was probably the one that I didn't like at all because uh, the Yupa paper just was not working out. But it was an experiment that had to be done. <laughs> um, so, that one wasn't too great. And what else? Oh, and the other one I, I seriously struggled with were the chocolates. The chocolates in the box. I was not a big fan of that one either. So I think, yeah. <gasps> Actually, I really, really like the tennis shoe. That was a good one. Fill this section in with grey as well. Don't know why I missed it. more of the light yellow <clears throat> I can see some red tones in here so I'm going to use some of the Venetian red, number 190. Yes, that's a good color. And some of the Bister number 179. Hey Kelly. Hey Cinder. Um, 
Cinder is saying, can't get comfortable with the sanded papers yet. I still use Fabriano HP or OMS. I want to like it because of the time factor. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a little bit to get used to. But if you're used to just using watercolor paper or just, you know, drawing papers, not sanded papers, it, it takes time to develop that sort of skill already. So part of you feels like you are cheating on your drawing because <laughs> you're you're skipping out on those tiny little sort of details. Does that make sense? But it is nice to save time. Okay, I really want to blend this in. Peach. Okay, so here comes the fun part and I think I need to get another brush. Actually, if I can find one. So I'm going to take some of my zested pencil blend and I've got this brush here which has some red on it so I just have to clean that off. But if you take a paper towel, you dip your brush in and you can just clean your brush like that just so the excess color and then also when you're blending you dip your brush in and you got to dab off the excess before you blend because if you have too much solvent it's just gonna lift the color off or it's just gonna move it around like mud but and if you have too little solvent it's because it's a sanded paper it's almost like gonna brush it off like dust these little circular motions and almost use my brush to create texture on the rocks. Looks pretty cool. Try not to make the brush strokes too consistent because then it will look like consistent patterns which we don't want. A little bit goes a long way. With sanded paper, you really, really have to use the tiniest amount of solvent. Your brush has to be borderline dry. That's how little solvent you need to use on sanded paper. Otherwise, it is not going to work for you. It's not like watercolor paper because watercolor paper can absorb liquid, so it can handle more solvent. Okay, and when you feel it's too dry that it's sort of just making pencil dust instead of blending it in, then you can dip it in again. I think we're still okay for now. Oh, 
Uh, Camilla saying, I watched your wonderful blending video with the blue spheres and rose. How much do you let the final um, odorless, odorless mineral spirits dry before using the tissue to blend? Um, you know what? I actually don't really have waiting times between the time. The odorless mineral spirits dries pretty quick, so I just get straight on with it. So I don't leave it for too long, actually, because I, I still want some on the surface. So I'd almost immediately blend with the tissue after using solvent. You don't have to wait too long. That's already such an old video, that one, that layering tutorial. I think it's two, two years old, maybe even more, three years. <laughs> it's a good video. It's one of my most watched videos on my channel, I think. So if you guys want a video on how to layer colored pencils, I've got a free real-time tutorial on my channel for you guys. So this is a really great underpainting. You can see a nice variation of different colors that are blending into each other. And that didn't take us too long at all. Really looks like a painting with how smooth the mineral spreads makes it. Closer to the moth, I might just use a smaller brush. This brush is a bit thick. So I'll just brush all the big sections. Uh, Christy's asking if the Mitant text sanded paper is the same as pastel mat. No. I think they actually, they, pastel mat, when I try, when I rub my finger over pastel mat, I can't feel the texture at all. Um, but this one, I can feel the texture and this, the texture of the Mitons text almost feels a little bit like suede. It's weird. Suede with a little bit of a grit is what this paper feels like. Whereas the pastel mat, when you brush your fingers over it, you can't feel it at all. But you, you feel the pastel mat the minute you apply the pencil on the paper then you can feel the grit through the core of your pencil this one you can this paper you can still feel with your fingertips but um yeah in terms of applying your pencil to the paper the similarity between the two i think are close but there is a difference you can definitely feel the difference still <laughs> Thanks, Kamala. That's so sweet. <laughs> 
this paper and this sort of blending like this the smooth blending would be great for skin tones you can definitely even though it's sanded paper you can still get a super super smooth result I mean if you look at this section here you can't tell that it's sanded paper at all to a smaller brush so I'm gonna use this one it's number two uh, I must dip that in my tea brush allows for a bit more detail okay what's the time so three minutes and it was a Three minutes from now is when we actually supposed to be starting but I think this this was a good section to sort of get out the way and there's quite a few of you on here already <laughs> um, Karen is asking would you get similar results with brush and pencil powder blender? Um, see, I just don't have enough experience with brush and pencil powder blender. I've used it just a handful of times and I feel like... Uh, I don't know. I feel like I want to direct you to Lisa's channel because she uses it and demonstrates it very well. Um, so maybe go check out her videos because I think you get more from it than me trying to speculate really what it'd be like if it'd be similar. I've always just been a fan of the Odeless Mineral Spirits and I just tend to go that way. I have tried brush and pencil powder blender a few times but it's just not a product that I can really get get the hang of or the product that I really enjoy, enjoy at all. So. I can't give you too much information about that one, Karen, sorry. Uh, Sinbar, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Sheldine, do you think that um, pastel matte uses as much colored pencil and sanded paper? Do you think that pastel matte uses as much colored pencil as sanded paper? Ah, uh, yes, I do. I do think so. Just because you can't feel the texture with the surface of your finger, but you can, there's definitely quite a grit with your pencil. And it also, when you say sanded paper, it depends on what grit of sanded paper. So pastel matte and like the Mitons Tex or the Mitons Touch papers, I'd say would use the same amount of pencil. But if you're going to use a grit like the UART 400, which is quite a heavy grit, then that one will probably eat through it a little bit more. <laughs> Welcome back, Robin. Um, oh, sorry. That's just a reminder to tell me it's 9 o'clock and this is when the stream's actually supposed to start. Um, okay, so Karen said, I've watched most of Lisa's demos with a, plen with a blending power powder and have learned a lot. I've never tried Odeless Mineral Spirits on sanded paper or give it a try. Great, yeah, yeah, you'll definitely learn a lot from her. Um, so, yeah. I, I generally, if I don't feel like I can give you an accurate answer, but I know of an artist that can, I will refer you to that artist. Um, it's, it's great to keep your sort of ranges of artists that you watch 
keep a keep a few of them available to you there are plenty available to you so keep keep a few or watch a few of them um, because you get different pieces of useful information from different artists don't just keep your eye on one artist um, and then Camilla is also asking what's the difference between the Mitan's text versus the touch um, the only difference is the weight of the paper. I think it's a touch that's about five grams heavier, but the grit and the surface of the paper is exactly the same. And text is more, the text is available in Australia, but not the touch. And the touch seems to be available more everywhere else and not the text. So it just depends on where you are and what you can get your hands on. I'm sorry if my alarm gave you guys a fright. <laughs> it gave me a little bit of a fright as well. <laughs> um, okay, so for those of you guys that are tuning in now, um, it's 9 a.m. here in Australia, um, New South Wales, and I think it's about 7 p.m. for you guys in Eastern Standard Time in the US. Um, welcome to you guys that are tuning in now. This is the July Color Pencil Magazine uh, challenge so I did start a little bit earlier because I wanted to get some of the underpainting done uh, if you guys want to download the image um, or find more information on the, their monthly challenges just check the link in the description and I've also got the supplies that I'm using are listed in the description as well um, that I'm using in this challenge so welcome guys and enjoy and also this is going to be my last color pencil magazine challenge I'm drawing because I generally do them the first Thursday of every month um, Thursday for those in the US Friday for those in Australia and um, but things are getting a little bit busy right now so I won't be doing more of them for a couple of months um, but I, of course if you guys want to know when I start things up again or whatever's happening you can subscribe to my newsletter on my website and then that way you can keep up to date if that's what you want to do okay <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Actually, I think what I'll do in about 10 minutes, if you guys don't mind, I'm just gonna take like a five minute pause break so I can feed my dogs because they'll just stare me down until I feed them. And um, yeah, just sort them out real quick if that's all right. <laughs> They're so cute. They, they've got these really nice cute onesie jackets on right now. <laughs> and they're lying on the couch right next to me. I could try and show you. That's my webcam, but I don't know if you'll be able to see. Oh, sort of. They're tucked in there. That's right, so Yupo paper is an insane paper for inks, definitely with inks and watercolors, yes. Um, I've used it successfully with my India ink marker pens where I did a very detailed boxer dog um, and that was amazing, I had so much fun with that, that was great. A Yupo paper is just not for colored pencils. So that's what I was trying. I was trying the watercolor pencils in the last challenge and it just was not working out. Although, you know what? I shouldn't say it wasn't working out because that it still ended up looking like a nice little watercolor pa uh, watercolor painting of the telephone. So it's just because what I was aiming for was a more realistic or more in depth drawing of a telephone, but you can't get that with pencils on the Yupa paper. So I shouldn't have really expected that result to begin with, but it still ended up looking like a funky little watercolor telephone anyway so I wouldn't say it was a complete fail um, it just I when I wanted to add deeper value I couldn't because it just it doesn't layer 
So you need, if you want intense colors, you really have to use inks for it. Um, and then it works amazing. <laughs> Thanks guys. Hey Jesse. Jesse says that my dogs have onesie pajamas as well. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, they really need it. Well, they probably don't need it because um, they are inside dogs. They sleep in our room at night, but I still feel like because they sleep against like the windowsill and it's it's freezing cold. Like it's been like zero or one or two degrees in the mornings and it's so cold and they never stay under their blankets. So I feel like the onesies are great because I don't have to worry about them um, getting cold. Because Ridgebacks are really bred for the extreme summer heats, um, not so much the winter. But also that being said, I've never seen them shiver. So I don't think they've ever gotten cold enough to actually shiver, which is good. Yeah, so we're in the middle of winter right now, so it's it's pretty cold. And it sounds like it's raining. It is, it's raining. So I think today is going to get even colder. <laughs> DJ says, I have no onesies. Too hot. <laughs> oh, I, I've got three onesies. And yeah, I definitely climb into them at night time as soon as I can. that looks it looks so cool okay so I'm just gonna close my zest it and put it away from my tea all right so that's like the first underpainting layer and I sort of want to do that whole thing I want to do all of that again and then it should really bring out the depth and the intensity of the rock so I'm just gonna mute you guys for a sec while I sharpen Trojan no I am not <laughs> what made you think that <laughs> <laughs Maureen says I love the pics you posted with them wearing it yeah they look so cute I do have two kids they're dogs they're Rhodesian Ridgebacks that's what you mean and they wear onesies <laughs> okay so I'm using the cold gray one again number 230 Paying attention to some of the highlighted areas on the rocks. Um, 
Um, Cynthia says, were you aware that you can use both sides of the Yupo paper? Yes, yes I was. Yupo paper is pretty great. <laughs> I used some Yupo paper in the Smart Art box where we did the um, acrylic pores and they turned out really nice. Hey Scrappy Cat, no problem. <laughs> Hey Jesse, I could to I totally agree with you. I prefer to deal with Australia's extreme heat than I do with their mild cold. <laughs> so our cold temperatures are not like that in the US and we don't have snow or anything here by me. Um, I'm not saying we don't have snow in Australia, there are areas. Um, but there's not snow everywhere, it doesn't get that cold here where I am, but still, even though it doesn't get that cold, I struggle with the cold the way it is. <laughs> I'd rather put up with the heat. But although I must say that the days here, when the sun is up during the day in winter, it, it does warm everything up so nice. It's not warm enough to wear a t-shirt, but it's still, it's warm enough to really enjoy the outdoors. Just makes you want to be outside a little bit more. Sandy.
Now let's add some more of the... Actually, before I carry on, I'm just gonna hop off for five minutes, if that's okay. I just wanna feed the dogs real quick. Um, and I will be right back. Uh, Scrappy Cat says, I looked up your town on Google Maps and it looks like you could live in either a farming area or in town. Oh, there are a lot of people that live here. Yeah, the town's really small. So um, I live in Leeton, New South Wales. So the population here is 12,000 and it's it's orange farming town. Um, so lots of orange trees and um, orange farms and lots of other farms as well. But yeah, it's mainly a, a country farming town. It's very lush and green and beautiful here, which I love. Um, but yeah, we are sort of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Um, okie dokie, so I'm just going to take a five minute break, I'll be right back. Um, when I pause the stream what happens is that the screen has the buffering symbol that's on um, and it will buffer until I restart the stream. So if you guys can just hold on for a few minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, thanks guys. radio <laughs> I'm back so color pencil magazine thank you for being on here they are saying um, a few quick facts lunar moths only live a week and have no mouth so they cannot eat in their final days but rely on the fat stored up as a caterpillar oh my gosh that's insane what a sad moth life your caterpillar days dreaming of becoming this beautiful lunar moth and you achieve it for only a short little time. They also they have a tail that will easily come off should a bat grab at it. Males have a more feathered look to their antenna. The second one I su suspect was a female. With the use of pesticides these moths are getting harder to find. Oh. Um. <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> for for anybody who would have gotten a fright then. I got a fright. It was just the uh, delivery guy. <laughs> I thought that because I heard the car, so I tried to mute as soon as possible, but I must not have muted in time to avoid the the bark. Yeah, I wonder what they mean when they enter your life. Wicked says, first loud woof I ever heard on <laughs> Shell's live stream. Even she's shocked. Yeah, it's so loud. It's so loud. Especially because my studio isn't in a room anymore. I'm in sort of the living room area. And um, yeah, it's, it's echoey and it's very loud in here. And it's the front of the house. So usually I didn't have the blinds open. It would have been worse if it was, but usually the blinds are open and the girls stare at the window and they can see if anyone's coming. But yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's so loud that it gives you a fright. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry for the fog. Jesse <laughs> Jesse says rest in, <laughs> rest in peace headphone users. I am so so sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I can just picture you. Oh <laughs> I 
Okay, let's carry on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there shouldn't be any more disturbances. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding that amusing because it's actually not that funny. I think I'd be pretty peeved off if <laughs> I was wearing headphones and that happened. <laughs> oh, why are you guys buffering? Do I refresh every once in a while? Actually, I didn't see, um, Sally, was it you that took the photo of the moth? You may have written it in the chat. You might just have to tell me again. Because another element that I so freaking adore about this photo is the little snail on top of the mushroom that sort of looks like it's looking up toward the moth. And the mushroom as well. It's, it's like a, a real life little fairy picture. Okay, let me go back. Oh, okay, you said in the morning last month I found this large lunar moth with a 4.5 inch wingspan on my window office. Oh, far out. I moved into a nearby rock and took this picture. About 10 days later, another moth was in the same exact spot. I realized it was attracted to the warm soft light of my lava lamp that is on my desk. A gift my friend Aliona Nicholson gave me. Once I finished immortalizing him he flew into a large tree and blended in perfectly with the leaves he safely stayed there all day amazing so I, I only read the, the um, cool facts about it but that that's pretty insane there must be um, there's this really cool thing let's just see So I'm just trying to see what it means. So the lunar moth may be considered one of the most spiritual and mystical of all animal totems. 
To meet one is a special gift for when she is in her adult moth stage, she only lives for approximately one week. While living through their ad adult moth life, they do not eat for they have no mouth. One might say that their purpose is to reproduce, but I say it is to love. They are born, they transform, they love, they die, and then are again reborn. Their cycles are short, as are, as are our years while we are here. We are reminded to make the most of our moments and to live and love to the fullest. She is most often seen in the evenings, attracted to the moon and to light. She speaks of our connection to the feminine, our inner spirit and our trust in ourselves. We learn of the importance to find the balance between light and dark, the seen and the unseen. She is a reminder that when all is said and done, our healing and sense of love are the ultimate journey. Cool, and it's actually a little bit more about that. So they signify new beginnings as they represent a continuing quest for truth and knowledge, the gift of intuition, psychic perception, and heightened awareness. Things that are associated with seeing the light. And there's a bit more. Yeah, so it might be worthwhile actually looking out the meaning of the lunar moth and getting a little bit inspired by that. I think it's pretty amazing that you come across that, Sally. I think it would have made your day super, super special. Ah, oh, seriously, Tracy, you only got the email now. That's weird. Uh, Rogue is asking, will you finish this today? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I'm gonna try. And I'm sorry I got a bit carried away there. So I'm just gonna, I'll get in the mode. Hey Terry, yep, I also have big sheets of the, of the Mitons um, sanded paper and yes, you'll just have to cut it. But this piece that I'm using now is an off cut of a big sheet. But you can, the text, you can get text sheets like um, this which are, let me just zoom out there quick. So the text, you can get a pad like this of the text, but the, the touch paper, which I had sent to me from overseas, were massive, massive sheets, but you can get some in various colors and in white and in black of the text. But the only difference between the text and the touch, and I said this before, is the um, the touch is about five grams heavier than the text. That's the only difference. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the only difference. Because when I was looking up, I was trying to look for what the differences were. and. That was all I could find was literally the the weight of the paper, nothing else. The grit and all that is the same. And trying the two papers, like I have I tried both of them, I can't tell the difference.
olive green yellowish Nicola is saying the first time using sanded paper is so different to hot pressed I've used for years. Yeah, <laughs> very different, but super, super fun. And it also saves you a lot of time because you don't have to layer as much as what you have to on the hot pressed paper. Okay, the Van Dyke Brown. So the rock is starting to grow nicely in texture. should be recording. One way to add these greens it's gonna make it pop out so much
feel like I need to squint my eyes sometimes just to see where I need to add some more. Ooh, some blue would be good in here. Some indenthrine blue, 247. Me is. <laughs> she must be busy. Um, Terry's asking, am I using odorless mineral spirits instead of brush and pencil powder blender? Yes, I am. And Gail, yes, sanded, sanded paper does have a tooth to it. Definitely. Um, the only standard paper that you can't really feel the tooth with your finger and it's technically standard paper is pastel matte paper. So instead of black to bring the shadows out, I'm using this blue. I think now's a good time to probably blend this all in. Actually, no, I'm gonna get stuck onto some of these leaves. <clears throat> Actually, I'm gonna do the mushroom. So I'm gonna use the cream 102. I'm just going to block in the entire mushroom with this color. So I'm going to do like a rough little underpainting for everything quick I think I think that's what I want to do so using some May Green 170 get some of these leaves in I'm not worried about details or textures or anything yet we'll, we'll get to that later sounds so nice. Can you guys hear it? Hey Amy.
Camilla says I love underpainting. No idea. There's a sort of like a, <clears throat> excuse me, a tranquility about it. Like you just get so in the zone and when you're listening to nice music and you, you can just get so chilled out because you don't have to overthink the underpainting because you're not thinking about the details you're not too fussed about it yet you just want to block in color and value <clears throat> excuse me hey diane <laughs> Good morning. Okay, another green. Let's use the earth green yellowish. I'll put in all the little twigs and stuff later. Let's just get the green things in. looking like it's all sort of blending in with each other which is fine for the underpainting we begin to develop depth and detail as we carry on Robin saying, I like your new hairstyle. <laughs> this is it in its natural naturalness. Even this, I have a cowlick right here. I actually have two in my fringe. So my fringe like does this super major curl <laughs> when I leave it to dry on its own. Which sometimes looks okay, sometimes not. But thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> Scrappy Cat is saying, do you think, do you know if you can use ink tents on sanded paper for underpainting? I haven't tried it yet. I think you could, because the solvent goes pretty good on this paper. So I'm guessing water with the ink tents may do the same. You will have to try, you'll have to experiment and see. With a UART paper, my favorite grit is 400 grit as well. <clears throat> and let's choose a darker green. Choose chromium green opaque. Actually, I'm using much darker green. 
Let's go with Fine green, number 267. I'm just gonna sharpen this, excuse the movement and the noise. I use a Derwent hand crank sharpener and it makes amazing points, pencil points. Rita Hayworth here. Who's Rita Hayworth? It sounds familiar. Oh. Oh, that's a major compliment if you think my hair looks like hers. <laughs> DJ says, I think I'm going to like doing this pick. Yep. I, I'm really enjoying this one too. I think you'll like it too. I can't wait to add the silver. So usually I would stream for about an hour and a half, um, but this one, I'm gonna stick it through to the end. So it will go longer. If you guys need to go, that's fine. It will be available to watch later on if you choose. Um, but if I don't stick it out and get it done, I don't know when I'll get to it again. So I'm just gonna finish this. some beautiful violet and magenta colors down here in the bottle bottom so I'm gonna use red violet number 194 Doing tweaks specifically, I just want to block in some color. And I'll use some of the um, Bister.
okay, I really want to get to blending this in. <laughs> okay. Um, before we blend it in, let's do the underpainting for the moth as well. So I'm using some of the light green, number 171. Hey, Michelle is asking if she heard me say earlier that this is my last Color Pencil Magazine um, challenge demo drawing for a couple of months, and yes it is. So we just have a lot coming up in the next couple of months, family things, my mom's coming to visit for a nice um, long visit, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to stay focused on family and a couple of cool things coming up in my life that... Um, yeah, I don't want to have to have any pressures of anything that needs a deadline or specific day. I just want to enjoy it and spend every day as it comes. And then get back into it once my mom goes back. Okay, so I took this color out for the mop. Take some light. Aww, thanks, Color Pencil Magazine. <laughs> That's very kind. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Scrappy Cat. I'm super excited. I miss her so much. So it's uh, it's been three years since I last saw her. We talk all the time. Like we probably talk. Uh, every second day we're on the phone with each other um, sometimes it's every day um, so my mom's the kind of person I could just talk to for hours all the time we never run out of conversation topics <laughs> so being able to see her again is gonna be amazing and because my brother and my sister-in-law had a baby seven weeks ago. No, two months ago already. She's already eight weeks old. Um, so my mom's coming over so that she can finally meet her her first grandbaby. So it's super exciting. <clears throat> <laughs> Thanks guys, you guys are awesome. <laughs> But yeah, also those that are on my student portal, don't worry, I'm not going to forget about you guys. Those things will still be carrying on whenever I get the extra gap. Um, so I'll, I'll still put content out on there every once in a while. I just don't know when I'd be able to do a live stream demo again. And then the same with the pan pastel demos, I'll just be doing two more. And then that'll be it for a little while. And I still have workshops and that booked in in a couple of towns, so I still got to do all that stuff too. So I'll still be busy. <laughs> so I just had to pick, pick which ones I can still do and which ones I sort of have to let go for a little bit. Yay! 
Congratulations, Robin. That's amazing. Actually, my sister-in-law's name is Robin as well. That's so right, Wicked. Wicked says it's great that now people who moved across the world can be in contact with their family in various ways without it costing a small fortune. Exactly. I use WhatsApp. I call my mom on WhatsApp all the time and it just uses the Wi-Fi. And we can talk for hours and it's crystal clear. It's so easy to hear her. There's no interference or interruption or delay. So it is really easy to communicate now, nowadays. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Using some of the cream. No detail yet, just underpainting on the moth. the bister, it's on the top of the mushroom. how smooth you can get your edges. I'm just dipping this in my solvent and then dabbing my brush off, dabbing the excess off on to a paper towel. A bit more than that. If you have too much it's just gonna lift it, lift it off. create really really detailed edges with a brush like this and then the grit of the paper isn't going to get in your way so if you just added pencil you can really see the grit of the paper but if you use your solvent you can really blend it smooth and it just looks like a painting <clears throat> Birthday is on the 1st of February. So mine's been and gone a while ago. <laughs> but my mom's birthday was on the 23rd of June, and Sunday, what's Sunday's day? I'm not sure who's on Sunday. But congratulations, Amy. He's two years old. I drew him, didn't I? I drew Kai in the November challenge. And he's two. Aww. <laughs> Time really flies.
Okay, so that's a pretty good underpainting for the month. See which other areas have a texture that need removing. I forgot to put some violet in here. Wow, that just adds that extra little touch. Okay, it's under painting. Now let's do the mushroom. Thanks, Amy. That's so nice to hear that. <laughs> Cynthia saying it's amazing how fast the coverage is with this paper. Yes, the coverage is really, really quick. So once I blended all of this in and you don't see the texture anymore, it's going to start looking quite nice. And then we can probably get into the little details and add more depth because right now it all looks pretty like there's not all that much value making certain areas stand out more so we need to emphasize our shadows and our highlights a fair bit more than what it is right now This is so relaxing. When I get super quiet, it means I'm getting super, super relaxed. But I'll try not to be too quiet. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara you're complimenting my hair thank you gives me more confidence in just embracing the naturalness of it because <laughs> I don't want to straighten it or put damage it too much because I actually feel like this is the healthiest my hair has been in quite a long time and I was so tempted the other day I saw this amazing photo um, of this like because um, I have to dye my hair again because I actually have quite a few grays <laughs> that I need to hide away and I usually just dye my own hair and um, I saw this photo of this beautiful gray like ombre so it's like dark at the top and then it's like a gray ombre I think you call it where you go from light uh, from dark to light colors on the tips and I, I was so so tempted to go and do that and then I was like no 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 um, I'll be so disappointed in myself because it's just going to damage my hair. So I decided against it. <laughs> now I'm actually really glad that I did. 
not do it, that I did not do it. I think we all have those, those moments. We see something and we're like, oh my God, that looks amazing. I want to do that. And then you do it spontaneously. And then afterwards you're like, oh, probably should have thought about it a little bit longer. So I've been good. So what I did is I actually to a couple of my friends and family. I sent a photo and I was like, what do you think? Do you think I should do it? And they were so good and they gave me pretty good feedback. They were like, yes, it'll look amazing. But almost all of them said, are you sure you want to do it? Because it's going to damage your hair. So then I was like, okay, no. Because <laughs> I've, I've gone blonde before and it wrecked my hair. I ended up cutting it all off, like really short. And then kept cutting it off, cutting it off, cutting it off until it all grew out. And then I could grow my hair long again. So that took about a year before I could get all of that damage grown out. <laughs> Cynthia says sometimes I get so relaxed watching that I have a nap. <laughs> yeah, I, I get I too, I get so relaxed that I feel like I could go back to sleep. I get like that too when I read, like I love reading, but I can't read for that long because reading just gets me in such a relaxed vibe that I end up just wanting to go to sleep. <laughs> I can never get through more than a chapter at a time because I just get so tired. says that I make this look so easy. <laughs> I've got to take the plunge and try colored pencils and some type of blender. Yes, you gotta just try it. You gotta try it. You can't be afraid. You just gotta dive in and do it. And tell yourself, what's the worst that can happen? Hmm, you might not like it. You might not look the way it Sheldine's looks. It may not look the way it's supposed to look, it may look like a complete abstract image. So what, that's the worst that can happen? Is that so bad? <laughs> Probably not. And you can be like, what's the best that can happen? Uh, you learn something, you've gained a little bit more experience in something new. The next one will always be better. So you've only got a lot to gain, nothing to lose. Oh my gosh, I've missed you. So nice to see you on here. It's been a while. <laughs> oh my, I had this song stuck in my head for ages. It sounds like this, the Spider-Man song. So change, change, change before you get it stuck in your head again. This one's much nicer. Um, get this leaf up. See, the more you blend, the more it's starting to look like a good underpainting. And you can see there's no detail. Still looks pretty, pretty boring and not so great at the moment. And that's what it's supposed to be like for the first few layers. That's the thing with it. I'm reading books that I'm super interested in and I want to read more and I sit there forcing my eyes open trying to get through the next page until eventually I'm like I can't anymore. 
gonna put it down. So it does look a little bit dark while it's wet, but when it dries, it dries quite nicely. But try not to saturate it. Because you'll end up being here for longer. Because you need to add more. More layers, I mean, not more mineral solvent. Can you have thunder? I think it was thunder. See, so even though this is such a small drawing, it's gonna take you a couple of hours to do it. So I started at what was it? Quarter past eight. So it's been two hours and 15 minutes almost. So getting this amount of work done in two hours and 15 minutes is actually pretty quick for color pencils. Hey Jody, why didn't you get a notification? I did send an email out to everybody. And I put it on all the Facebook pages. Tracy did say though that she did get an email, but it's, she got it way too late. It only comes through much later. saying she's never had issues that ev that all others have had with prisma colors yeah me neither i haven't had any issues with prisma colors i still love them dearly and they're so cheap right now you can get the full set of prisma colors on amazon for less than a hundred dollars Welcome. <laughs> I'm 
Gail says I was having a nap. That's why I missed the first hour. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> So even blending can take a fair bit of time. So don't try and rush the blending process. The blending can take just as long as the actual layering with pencils. The blending is the most fun for me. <laughs> I feel like I almost like the blending more than the layering with pencils. What? 10 minutes already. I just feel like I just pressed repeat on my timer. Crazy. Yes, I'm using the Polychromos pencils and Zested Pencil Blend. So we add to this are going to pop out quite nicely. I feel like we pretty much got the real dark values sort of established. Thanks, Karen. Karen says it's so fun to see the moth and the rocks and the mushroom and leaves begin to appear out of the originally blank paper. Mm, it is nice. Creating something out of nothing.
You said me get a great sense of achievement and satisfaction out of it. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I think I'm gonna do now is I'm going to work from the left to the right. Or whenever I say that, I end up jumping all over the place. So at this moment, I'm feeling I'm gonna try and work from the left to the right. I might change my mind later on. And now I'm gonna focus on detailing from and just moving across. So I will be jumping between my pencils and my blending with solvent. So let's start detailing some of the rock area and the leaves. So using my light green number 171. the cream for the highlights on the leaves it'll mix in with the green so it won't even appear yellow and then I'm gonna use this tiny little two over zero two slash zero round tack on brush because it's really really small so I can get those really really sharp edges My boyfriend's awake, I can hear him on the phone. He's watching videos on his phone. I might go say hello real quick and then I'll come back. Go say good morning. 10.30, he had a serious sleep in.
Okay, guys, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna make breakfast for myself and Benny. Um, I will carry on with the stream later. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll create a new stream. Um, I'll probably be back in about half an hour. I don't want to leave this to buffer for half an hour, so I'll just start a new stream afterwards. So there'll be two parts to this drawing, I guess. Okay, I hope that's all right. But the most important parts were done. Now it's just a matter of doing the detailing um, and getting it to look a little bit more refined. Okay, so thanks guys. I will come back later and we'll carry on. <laughs>